Welcome to the December 11, 2017 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Dupree? Here. Ms. Hendrickson? Here. Ms. Saunders? Here. Mr. Fellows? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. Mr. Bealy? Here. And Ms. Oglis? Here. Thank you. And just a quick, couple quick housekeeping notes before we move on. Number one, we're obviously not in our usual venue tonight <laughs> due to ongoing renovations in Town Hall. Um, as part of that, we don't have microphones here. We're told that they can hear us. Um, through the system pretty well as long as it's just one person talking at a time. So we'll just try to be uh, aware of that and try to paper shuffling and side conversation to a minimum. Uh, thank you. And the next item, oh, the other piece of housekeeping. Item number six on the agenda, um, 137 U.S. 1 Prime Mercedes Benz was tabled at the request of the applicant. So we will presumably hear from them again in a future. Uh, moving on, next item is approval of minutes from the November 20th, 2017. I have one comment. The minutes is on page three of the handout. It's the second page of the text of the minutes. It's, yes, it's uh, under Mr. McGee's comments. Uh, instead of the word septic, it was super. It was, it was a tie into the super line, not to the septic. Under Ms. Saunders, uh, I had some uh, sort of additional emphasis that I placed on the need to minimize impacts of wetlands in order to meet the intent of the conservation subdivision um, that I would request, and I'm happy to provide this to you. And then also on page five, regarding um, Prompto, um, there were just a couple inserts to, to talk about the unloading loading process without a curb or deep wall barrier. And then under the 70 Pleasant Hill Road site, um, just changing the word inner fill to inert fill. And, um, and then at the top of page six, regarding the CPRC um, 70 Pleasant Hill site also, talking about an in-loop fee um, instead of a fee in so, but all in all, excellent minutes. Thank you so much for the opportunities to make the end of the revision. Thank you. Any other comments? I'd like to move to approve as amended. Second. Any discussion? Any further discussion? All in favor? Janice, thank you. Next item. <coughs> Uh, Charming Vintage Chapel LLC requests sketch plan review for 450 County Road, map R2, lot 5D. Jay? Sure. This is, yep, as a quick introduction, this is an application in the RFM, that's the Rural Farming and Manufactured Housing Zone. Um, so just to note, and this is probably in our, it was in our staff comments, but the use is uh, actually going to be going before our Board of Appeals this coming Wednesday um, as it is a special exception use the, uh, a, as well as for the expansion of a non-conforming structure so the addition of the awning um, so we just want to let the board members know that that is ongoing but the applicant did want to appear before the planning board for a sketch plan discussion um, assuming that if things go well for them at Board of Appeals they'll be back uh, I did note, uh, or will note, thank you, Mr. Chair, that our staff comments identified that this was going to the Board of Appeals in October. Uh, that was just a mistype. We apologize for that. They're going December, I think it's 13th at this point, so two days from now. So, um, so that's just sort of by way of use and background. Uh, so we also have received staff comments, as we typically do for sketch plans, and sketch plan is an opportunity. It's an informal application. It's a non-binding uh, uh, process. Uh, 
really an opportunity for the applicant to provide for the board an overview of what they're looking to do, as well as for the board to provide some guidance in terms of uh, the future review of the project. So a couple of highlights that staff, uh, from the staff memo uh, identified. One, that the site is on the historic preservation list. It's one of our 48 listed sites. Um, and so we've asked the board to weigh in on if you'd like to have the Historic Preservation Implementation Committee review this and provide commentary. Uh, we've done that once or twice before, at least at least once I can remember the 79 County Road application. Um, another item that we want to flag and be sure we have discussion around is really understanding the capacity of the site and the number of folks that could really, um, that the venue, the proposed venue could house. The concern being um, and really flagged by our, you know, our police department is that there really is not any opportunity for off-site off or on-street parking um, in this location. Um, site, we have a high crash location at the intersection of Broadford Road and Route 22, um, and sort of a lot of high traffic areas, and so we want to really be sure that um, parking and site capacity is, is well vetted and understood moving forward. Uh, let's see, another item that's worth at least starting to dis discuss is the applicant is seeking a second means of agress, uh, access or egress on the site, uh, vehicular. And as our site plan review ordinance standards really uh, state that you know, where you have a corner lot with two street frontages, that access is to be from the sort of lower volume street and that the only, um, to get a secondary means of access, the applicant would need to demonstrate to the board that that second access way would actually increase or enhance safety and mobility uh, through the corridor. So that'll be something that'll need to be looked at. Um, I guess just the last item we just want to identify or touch on is be sure the staff's clear on the applicant's uh, desire for the uh, the treatment of the parking area. Um, it's our understanding that we're looking to maintain that as a gravel parking area. Um, our standards typically look for commercial sites to have paved parking. Gravel parking can be acceptable by they clearly demonstrate that it's going to be well compact and have a wearing surface similar to pavement, i.e. not pushing a lot of, um, of the gravels around during uh, you know, either wet muddy seasons or um, snow events or what have you. Um, and then I guess if it is going to remain gravel, really just understanding how are the areas that are identified sort of as landscaped areas or the well that's sort of in the, in the area of the, of the uh, parking lot going to be uh, uh, treated, protected, maintained. Um, so I think those are the sort of high points um, at this point. And I turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Jay. And I'll turn over to the applicant's representative. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Jay. Um, my name is Jason Haskell. I'm the project manager on the uh, Charming Vintage Chapel project um, with DM Roman Consulting Engineers. Uh, the site is located at the intersection of Broad Turn Road and Kenner Road. Uh, the 1.86 acre parcel is located in the rural farming manufactured housing zoning district and it's the site of the former uh, first universalist uh, parish church. Uh, the proposed project is looking to maintain the existing place of worship uh, use that's allowed in the RFM zone by providing uh, couples the, uh, the possibility to get uh, married within the existing chapel. Um, the remaining function of the remainder of the, uh, the property will be um, an accessory to the uh, ceremony itself. Uh, the existing hall on the property will be uh, for any receptions that want to be inside and also um, for workspace for uh, preparation for the receptions. In addition, uh, the applicant is also looking to construct a paver patio and an awning uh, connecting the existing church and the annex building uh, to provide for a, a covered social area for uh, guests before and after the actual ceremony. Uh, the applicant also intends to erect a larger uh, 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 event tent um, for the outdoor receptions. 
The intent is to keep the awning in the reception tent erect during the early spring and, uh, to the about the early fall and disassemble it during the winter months. It is also anticipated that as typical the weddings will typically be on a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, uh, typically in the afternoon and into the evenings. Um, we have submitted, as Jake said, uh, we have submitted for a special exception uh, to the zoning board to allow for the adjunct use of the place of worship. Uh, currently, the uh, there's an existing large gravel uh, parking area that was built by the church. Uh, right now, it's kind of in rough shape. It's uh, not compact. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's very sandy, and uh, it's really going to need to be rebuilt if it's going to be sustained for the, the more of an increased use, if you will. Um, yeah, we're going to plan to maintain the existing gravel driveway onto Broad Turn Road, and uh, obviously to rebuild the gravel areas. Uh, right now, we're estimating at around 125 guests as kind of a capacity for the step for the uh, property. Uh, right now, the plan is showing 67 parking spaces, which comes out to about uh, one space per 1.8 guests. So it should be adequate for the use. Um, obviously, that will be something that will be addressed in the, any type of any traffic planning reports that are done. Uh, design also includes a new driveway connection. Uh, off of County Road. Uh, this area will be utilized simply for the employees and the vendors for the reception. Uh, this will keep the larger vans and the larger trucks separate from the wedding guest parking lot. Uh, this will provide um, for the food and drink vendors and the entertain entertainment providers to have easy access to the existing hall and a reception tent right there. Uh, we've estimated there will be about 10 employees or vendors at each event. We do believe that this low volume of vehicles uh, using this parking area shouldn't uh, create any further traffic problems in the area. The proposed, the proposed development will be served by the existing on-site well, existing power telephone and cable coming off of the uh, utility pole on County Road. Um, the existing septic that was out there um, was under severely undersized for what the proposed use was going to be, so Longview Partners LLC uh, designed a uh, septic uh, system for the 125 guest capacity and the 10 additional employees. Uh, that septic field, that uh, septic system was built this past summer. Um, the applicant does plan to install landscaping throughout development to provide for an intimate setting for the ceremony and the reception. Uh, lighting will also be uh, proposed to illuminate the parking lot and the walkways throughout the development. Uh, a landscape design and photometric plan will be submitted to uh, during the future uh, site plan submission. Uh, since the project will most likely disturb an acre of land, uh, the stormwater management for the property will have to incorporate stormwater quantity and quality control uh, per the town's post-construction stormwater infrastructure management ordinance. Um, at, at, again, uh, once we go with the formal site plan submission that will all be included. Um, other regulate, regulatory permitting would be, um, since we are going to be including the extra uh, driveway entrance off the county road, the, we'll need a driveway entrance permit from the DOT. Um, we also do understand that the DOT is proposing a new intersection design, incorporating, and one of them just happens to be incorporating a roundabout design. Since the redesign will potentially affect uh, the driveway locations and the traffic patterns for the property, we have been trying to get in touch with the DOT and have still not been able to get in touch with them or have gotten a return phone call. Um, we also need a stormwater permit rule if, in fact, we do go over a major disturbance. Uh, we do understand that this proposal uh, will take uh, more studies and design efforts. Um, before it's actually completed and approved. Um, but we are hoping tonight just to answer any of your questions or uh, see any of your concerns. And I'll turn it back over to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, so again, sketch, review, and discussion. Uh, Vic, would you like to start off? Um, let me start by saying that I'm glad to see that somebody's going to put a little effort into this property. It's um, 
It's been underutilized in a very busy corner of town. Uh, any concerns I have actually probably relate mostly to the traffic um, going by this property because that is a steep corner at high speeds from Long Plains over to 22. Right. And then, of course, on the other side where you have your driveway entrance is uh, kind of a, a, also a, a strong corner coming around at high speeds to people hit the stop sign to be able to turn on to, to County Road or to Long Plains. So it's, it's, you know, it's got its challenges, uh, to say the least. Um, you know, I, I'm glad to see that you know, you're looking to do something with it. Um, and there have been improvements. I, I do have a concern um, with the parking lot and the curb cut on that portion of County Road. I know right now it's kind of a dirt turnaround. I imagine that's the space you're, you're talking about utilizing here. And the dirt turnaround is actually right in front of the building, isn't it? Yeah, right. Yeah. The dirt turnaround is right around in here. Right. And we're coming further off. So you're coming further off. Yeah. Um, so how far from that corner would that cut be? That's a, from the stop sign, I guess. Do you know how from far from the stop sign? Probably 300 feet. A couple hundred feet. So you'll have a good feet. line of visibility from 50 mile an hour traffic coming from Long Plains on County Road. Do you have a good line of sight? Yes, yes. Kind of looking, yeah, if you were coming out of the, park, the parking lot, looking right, there was a good distance. Um, and then looking left, you'd be looking at the intersection itself. And there, what, it seemed to be enough. Uh, sight distance that we haven't actually done the study yet to, to measure it, but yes. Uh, so that, that'd be one area that I'd be interested in seeing is the, of course, the traffic study that goes along with this. Um, any intentions on putting any type of fencing in front of the property? Um, you know, my concern with uh, creating a space like this is it would be a social gathering. And, uh, that high volume of traffic kind of really points right into the face of that church and at high speed sometimes. Um, is there any, any thoughts on the safety of your guests on that front 22 road, um, whether it be a short <coughs> fence on here? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I'm get, we are going to have a landscape plan put together, and that could be a good place for some evergreen shrubs or something around that line rather than a fence. Um, I know we want to keep the integrity of the historic use, the, the historical building, and try to not make it look like we're blocking everything off from the view of it. it but I, I do still, understand your concerns. Is it still being used for services at all? No. no. Any intention to go back to any use of services as a church? Maybe. 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 Potentially, yeah. <coughs> right. um, I have been uh, Mark Tibbetts here. <laughs> I, have, I have been in that parking lot before, and it is more mud. Probably more mud than it is gravel uh, currently, so... Um, I'm personally not, I don't have a problem with it going to a gravel rather than asphalt, um, but it's going to have to be a you know, good quality to withstand traffic and done well. Oh, and yeah, if, yeah, if you have people coming out of there with dresses and you know, everything like that, they're not going to be walk, they're gonna be wanting to walk through a right. Yeah, yeah, right. parking lot, so it, we'll have to recreate it for sure uh, anyways because we'll have to do a little bit of rework for stormwater. And then I noticed uh, the well, you know, going back to this well real quick, you're, are you, what are you doing with the well? Is it just <coughs> maintain and you're using it for the existing purposes? That's going to provide you water? That, that is going to be providing water. And um, right now there's uh, some larger boulders in front of it that weren't located in the survey that should provide some type of uh, protection. Uh, I think that's it for me for right now. But yes, uh, happy to see something might happen here and wish you guys the best. Thanks, Nick. Roger. <laughs> Nick asked all, all the questions. <laughs> um, I, uh, I agree with Nick on almost everything he said, the statements he made. Uh, it's good to see something happening with this property. Right now, there's basically, it's not functioning as anything at the moment. Correct.
Ali Marchevitz. I bought the property on February 15th uh, last year. And, um, I thought it was a beautiful church. Me and my wife uh, live on Hanson Road in Scarborough. My business is a plus party rental. I'm in the industrial park in Scarborough, and I've been in business for 23 years. And so I've always told my wife if we found a place we could have an event and do weddings, I thought we have people calling us all the time. Well, where's there a nice place? Where's a nice place? So when we saw the church go for sale, it was for sale for a while. Uh, but really nice to fix it up and make something of it. And uh, so I love the church. I think it's a beautiful church inside. If you see it, the architecture is cool. I, I want to preserve that. And by being a tent company, I don't really have to, like, some, a lot of people take a church and they, they rip it apart and they've got it. And I, I really don't want to do that. I think the pews are beautiful. They have little doors. The balcony is gorgeous. So I, I really want to keep the integrity of the church. You see, the, the historical church is. It's, it's, as um, Brian would say, it's one corner of the entrance to Scarborough. So we did, um, I went to the auction this summer at Beatridge, and I got um, 126 pieces of granite. We did granite gardens around the church. The church was built on big granite stones, trying to make the whole look be, you know, old, keep that whole genuine. Uh, so, um, yeah, we're excited about it, and I'm um, hoping you guys and on the fence, I did want to say something, you know, on that side where I have thought that if cars are coming up the county road, you know, I mean, you're going to want a little privacy. But I figured before I say I'm going to put a fence, let's see what happens. Maybe if they allow me to, you guys allow us to have the parking lot on the side. And if they don't, you know, but if they have a parking lot, you definitely probably don't want a fence after that. So behind there, if you have a reception in the tent, people from the road are just kind of watching everything. They kind of have a little intimacy privacy. And I like that on the right side of the church, all those trees, I don't really want to touch that because when it fills in in the summer, it really blocks off that intersection and it keeps the whole back of the church area where people are pulling in that, coming into the church, into the hall, private. So. It is consideration for the intimacy of the event. Just a couple more. Um, regarding the historical, um, uh, the town's historical committee, yeah. you, you really, you might want to touch base with them. I, would just, I think it would probably be good to do that so yeah. that it doesn't come back later on. But, you know, I think what we may do, just to jump in quickly, Roger, is that as a board, we might, we might ask, ask, them, ask them to do a sort okay. of On the parking, um, is that 125, is that just for the guests or does that include the section over here where you're going to have the vendors and the, uh, the staff? Yeah, so the 67 parking spaces in, in the, the, the larger parking area and then the vendors will be in the, the side, one, one per vendor. Usually you have, you know, a photographer is going to be there the whole time. A caterer might have four or five employees, so you get four or five cars there. And then a the cake person will come and go. Some people are just going to, you know, vendors will come, drop off the flowers, decorate, and they're gone. But it's really the caterer, the photographer, um, that are going to be at the event the whole time. You know, they'll go through the whole event. But some other people that are supplying needs for the bride and groom, um, they're going to stop in and drop things off. That little part of the you know, I think it suffice you know, to help out, you know, so you don't take up the part of the year. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. I, I agree with Nick on the, uh, on the, uh, I agree with the council the parking and everything. Uh, my preference is to keep it that way, you know, upgraded, but we don't pay them. Very important. 
important, the traffic analysis, that's my only real concern, is the traffic and the fact that it's uh, going to be wild and woolly down here. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing the um, traffic study. Um, oh yes, we didn't mention the auto turn simulation. The staff recommends an auto turn simulation be provided to confirm that the proposed parking field is adequate for a 40 foot long trip um, ladder truck to navigate. Did you get this? Yes. Yes, okay, thank you. Um, and then we discussed buffering, that's fine. We didn't discuss lighting, but I'm sure it's pretty clear what we're looking for, right? Oh, for sure. And the dumpster is not a fire. And we talked about when the events are going to take place and so on. And I agree that the surface, I would like it not to be hard. So it's got to be definitely upgraded. So you're bringing on a lot more usage there. And um, I lived for many years in my house did not have a paved driveway. And it was lovely. I just loved not having a paved driveway. But it had to be maintained on a regular basis. You just got tired of maintaining it.
to life. Uh, my mind tends to go to uh, thinking about, so let's say uh, you pass all of the zoning ordinances, you've got all of, uh, you've taken care of whatever permits you need to do and you're ready to go. Um, I, is this going to be a year-round operation? I don't see it. No, I, I see maybe starting in third week in May, you know, really June, July, August, September. August and September are the best months in my party business, so most likely it's going to be the best months there. And uh, usually I go to October 31st to intense, um, and then it's over. You know. And maybe I can do something in the hall for Christmas parties, you know, because it is a beautiful hall, a little theater. Um, then at some at, if you are going to keep it open past October, you're going to need to consider how you would plow the, the parking lot and where you would put the snow. And at this point, there is nothing that I can see on these, these plants. Um, if it's truly just summer, uh, you might want to also think about how you're going to um, how you're going to be able to ensure the building is looked after at some point in the winter, so there might be some additional plowing just to make sure a caretaker can get in there. But in any case, what are you going to do with the snow? Uh, and one of the wonders of, um, it's great that it's uh, an old facility and that it's vintage and that it's absolutely charming. With that comes some uh, problems with some modern day living and amenities. Uh, if somebody comes to a church service, generally they are for an hour, an hour and a half. If they stay, however, for a wedding and a long-term reception, you're going to run into questions of adequacy of bathrooms. And I don't know what's inside the, uh, the, the adjunct building. I don't know if you're thinking at all about using porta parties because uh, if you have 125 people there for, let's say, four hours, there, there can be, especially in a vintage building, a um, real crunch there. So that's something to, to consider, what you, what you would do there. It really kind of goes to your business plan, and that's not in the, in the ordinances, but it is something to think about as you go along. I think uh, I'm worried about the traffic well, that's a very busy area, uh, but I think that this is a, a tremendous opportunity for a young couple that would like to uh, get married in something that's very different. So, thank you. Thanks. There are, just, there are two bathrooms in, in the hall right now. One of them is fully in the couch and accessible. And you're right, it, it might be possible to put four bodies in you know, so there'll be additional. But the receptor was designed so that it could handle you know, enough. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, you might be able to handle enough. I'm, I've, I've been in places where the lines, you know, right. uh, out at Highland Farms occasionally has yeah. been difficult. Yeah. Um, going last has its benefits. I think the benefits that are asked that I could possibly think to ask. I think it is a great use for that property. And you can take it on. Uh, very creative. It seems to go right along with your, your other business. So, uh, good luck with it. I think that what you've got here looks, looks good. I can't see any issues with it. Thanks. So, yes, a lot of good comments, questions already. Um, I think clearly we've got some, some, uh, some consensus around where. Concerns are potentially around traffic, access, egress. Uh, we look forward to seeing the traffic study uh, both with regard to the that second means of that access as well as other factors. Um, we seem to be in agreement on uh, referring this to the Historic um, Preservation Implementation Committee for their input. So 
we'll look forward to that. I will look forward to seeing a landscaping plan, um, as was stated, both for purposes of sort of you know general landscaping and buffering, but also potentially crowd control and, and how that relates to the, the intersection, generally in terms of safety and visibility. Um, Stormwater, obviously, is, is always a big one uh, at this stage and this type of site and location uh, in particular. And just want to make sure we're not, not missing anything. Uh, we mentioned the auto turn simulation for fire truck um, turnaround um, analysis of the, the well capacity. Um, so a lot of the things that we typically see at this stage, and it sounds like you have most of not all of these under radar already and are anticipating those and that's appreciated. Um, I also agree at a general level that um, this has a potential to be a great use and a great addition and I agree it is uh, it is sort of a gateway into Scarborough and that's a little bit of a funky intersection so um, you know, we always tell you we don't expect we don't expect you to solve all the pre existing problems but um, hopefully you can at least uh, mitigate things and not exacerbate anything. And on that note, I do appreciate that you are anticipating and trying to be proactive about the potential DOT improvements. And as I'm sure you well know, sometimes those timelines, uh, time horizons don't exactly match up with uh, others. So, um, but it's certainly good to be aware of that and try and integrate what you're, what you're thinking about with that. So. Um, I think we've hit all the all the key points. Do you have any questions for us? Is there any other input that you were, or feedback you were looking for from us? No, I think you guys definitely uh, hit all the uh, talking points. Yeah. Good word. Yes, Roger. Uh, in light of uh, the recent situation uh, with some of the other projects, you know, kind of uh, on street line, and yeah, we should mention that's good. You know, they should be any on street line. Emphasize. Yeah, no on street. Yeah. Right. Now that's that was in the staff notes, and I'm glad you highlighted it, Roger, because it is it is uh, I think that is a key starting point that we want to make sure that that's understood. Right. Thanks. More of a curiosity, but um, part of your property is in Buxton. Yes. Is there any process you need to go through in Buxton in order to achieve your goals? Uh, we have talked with Buxton about this, and they said that. Um, they just want to be kept in the loop with the process. They get a copy of the materials every time they submit it to you. So we'll, we'll just continue that way. And they said that they, whatever you, the, the town came up with, that would be adequate for them. So. Talk through. Um, 
let's see. So uh, I have that. Um, and then I guess the other thing for the board and applicant to talk about is the pending DEP permit. Um, the applicant, you know, again, as they mentioned at the last meeting, is trying to seek approval so they can get in the queue for additional for state funding. Uh, and so I know that's part of their, their sort of uh, anxiousness, so to speak. Um, and so staff will really uh, defer that question to the board as to what your level of comfort is on the remaining issues. We did prepare a draft motion with conditions for your consideration. Again, um, staff, as always, will defer to the board on those elements. But um, I will, I guess one thing I do want to say is that there was a, an initial uh, comment from our peer review uh, traffic engineer had some questions about the actual traffic counts we did receive, and I believe it was sent to the board before the weekend, if not, you probably saw it today. Um, the applicant did get out, do some actual traffic counts, and they've satisfied that one line of question. So, um, I guess with that, Mr. Chair, I would turn it back to you at this point. Great, thank you. And just quickly, before we have uh, the applicant's team uh, come on up, it was noted in the, in the, uh, the staff memo, but uh, if we do get to the point where we the board is considering possibly pulling on a conditional approval. Um, just based on precedent, we have at times done that when there's been a DEP permit outstanding in a situation like this where it's an amendment to previously approved plan. So there is some precedent for that, um, but we'll see where the board ends up. But just keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, and with that, I will welcome the applicant. Good evening, my name is uh, Cindy Taylor and I'm President of Housing Initiatives of New England Corporation. Um, and I'm happy to be in front of you again tonight. Uh, as you know, this is a development that has 40 units of senior housing. And I'd like to just do an overview of, um, we are trying to prepare for a submission to Maine Housing in the very beginning of February. Um, and we need the 30-day period where your approval um, cannot be challenged. So tonight is a critical night for us on our path, but I, I understand that you may have some concerns. If not, we're happy to answer any of those we can. I think the way this presentation um, breaks down is if I've got the staff memo in front of me. I have Kurt Newfield here, our uh, civil engineer from Sightlines, um, and he is uh, very well prepared to talk about that stormwater question, and um, we are, we're not adding any additional, so I think we're in good shape on that, and I'm going to let him explain that to you. I have uh, Rick Cheney here tonight to talk a little bit about how this development is uh, is being developed as an extension of Bessie Commons 1, um, and our, uh, the we are the we hold a lease with the town of Scarborough on this property, as you know, and so we are doing um, all of the, the management on parking and any other details on the site, within the site, um, with a master lease and sub leases to handle our um, financing between Bessie Commons 1 and Bessie Commons 2. I think the, uh, it, you probably have the materials in front of you for the review process. Um, we actually have the ability to um, put 54 units on this site uh, with the density bonus for senior housing, but um, based on the 40 units that are in front of you tonight, we don't need to um, maximize that. Uh, there were some comments that the staff provided for the matrix that's on our plan. Those, um, that matrix has all been revised, um, and I think you have it in front of you, um, but we can go over that. I think it would be easiest if I let Rich Cheney just comment on our lease arrangement so that you have an understanding of that, so that you can see how we are, do, we are developing this. Our, our existing building is the building that will uh, provide the frontage on Route 1 for us, so our second building is part of an overall phase development and does not require front yard setbacks. We meet all the side yard setbacks, but I think uh, it may be helpful to you as a board to at least have a little bit of an understanding of that. And I, I, I don't think you, we have to, you know, just try to laborious. Um, 
but I don't know if you've ever seen this before, so I just wanted to cover that. Do you want to just say a few words? Yeah. So, this is uh, Rick Shinnick from Drummond and Woodson, and I think you're all familiar with it. Like the uh, bowling ball in the knee. Nice touch. Um, Rick Shinnick, Drummond and Woodson. Um, as uh, Cindy said, the, the, the entire site is leased by the town. It was originally leased to Bessie School Senior Housing Corporation. Then the corporation assigned the lease to Bessie Commons Corporation. Then when phase one was approved and constructed, which was is the existing Bessie School plus the addition to the school. That portion of the project was subleased to Bessie School LP. The general partner of Bessie School LP is Bessie School Senior Housing Corporation, the original Bessie of the town. Phase two, which you're looking at tonight, will be sublet to Bessie Commons two. Partnership, the general partnership of which is also Bessie School Senior Housing Corporation. So you essentially have two sub lessees, one for phase one and one for phase two, the general partner of which is the same entity, Bessie School Senior Housing Corporation. The way the reason it's split into two is because of the nature of the finance of this particular type of project. It's a, it's a tax credit, if you will, the finance uh, project, and it has to be done with two separate partnerships to accommodate the nature of that type of finance. But the underlying entity that controls both uh, uh, limited partners is the same entity. So it's really a phased development. If you went through the lease, you would see that the lease, the time of the original lease, contemplated that this would be done in two phases. That's why, uh, I don't know, Jay, whether my email to you about the, the issue of setbacks and stuff may have been important. But essentially, this project falls within an exception under the ordinance regarding setbacks for each building. Because the first building is considered to be a principal building that met the setback standards, phase two building does not need to be, meet the setback standards. It's kind of odd in one sense. It's a, it requires closeness to the road rather than distance under the ordinance, but the first building meets that requirement. So that's it in a nutshell in terms of the legal structure, uh, uh, the ordinance compliance issue and setback. And the financing, once you approve it, hopefully, uh, we will enter in amend amendments to these leases, the subleases, to accommodate the portions of the project that are probably located in most of parking and access located in lot, lot one and lot two. But we don't want to do that. It does require us to go to the council to get their consent on the lease. Uh, we don't anticipate any issues there. But I didn't want to go to the council and ask for consent to amend until we had your final approval. So I know exactly what, what, the, what the site looked like and how it was used. Okay. Mr. Chair, if I could just on that point, just because it is, we are getting into a bit of legal uh, analysis there, I do want to let the board know that we did have Bill Saucier, our town attorney, review both those points. Uh, we asked the applicant's attorney to basically provide a position to which we could respond and our attorney was satisfied with uh, the, the uh, positions that Mr. Sinead put together. So uh, we are... Okay. Our, our master of these does contemplate this, so I think it was well um, documented in which one so thank you. Thanks. Um, I'm just going to... I don't... I want to thank all the board members that came up for our sidewalk. I thought that was very helpful. Um, and very instructive. So, um, but for those members who could not make that meeting, I guess this doesn't come up. 
I, I will. Uh, I wanted to just point out on the plan what we were referring to, just so the overall plan was so clear. So this is Bessie one, as you, if you can see it. Um, So Bessie Commons one, with Route one uh, at the bottom of the sheet here, uh, is our principal building. Uh, and then we have the entrance that uh, is existing, comes back, and we have created a roadway that is very close to the building, which is in keeping with your ordinance and the way that you want uh, this kind of um, higher density development. With uh, walkability and pedestrian access and good vehicle access for our seniors. So we have we have close proximity between the two buildings, um, which is much more evident when you're out there. And I would encourage any of you that do not take a sidewalk and just come anytime and take a look. But there, uh, one of the items that was listed in the. Uh, staff comments was what would we have for pedestrian access between Bessie Commons and Bessie Square. We currently have a well-defined walkway that will um, allow the residents of uh, Bessie Commons 2 to go to Bessie Commons 1. Um, and at Bessie Commons 1, we have a ramped access that actually gets us up, up the hill. And if anybody has a handicap, they would be required to, or would have to take that ramp to get to Bessie Square, and that would take them out to the one to the existing um, sidewalk that we built. We built both with Bessie Commons One, and we built a sidewalk at Bessie Square. So that is a direct access and a direct tie-in. We also have a walkway that connects to our lower parking lot at Bessie Square. And that's already existing. And again, that is the connection between this current building and our existing building, and then a walkway that gets to the um, Bessie Square, and they can take the stairs to get to the commercial development. So I think that's a that was a big point. Well, I'm not sure you can all see it since there's it's quite a distance step to Roger. But so, do you mind just telling us which um, sheet that corresponds with in the, in the plan set? This uh, one is C2, C2. Exactly. Um, so that you can all follow yeah. along in your sheets that I provided today. Um, another issue that came out of our sidewalk uh, was <clears throat> there was a concern that, that was brought up with respect to our. 25 foot setback on the easterly side of the property. And so we went back and we looked at this, and in order to preserve as many trees there as possible, you'll see there's a short retaining wall, short in length from the building, and it's not very high either, but it will allow us to retain as many trees in there as possible. So I think we've got a good buffer. It will only be pinched in that one area where the retaining wall is. And we have proposed trees that are going back in there, so we'll continue to have a buffer. I also brought along a, a, a picture tonight because I I went over and took a picture from Ward Street, looking back from our butter that will be um, probably the closest to this property, and you will see. I'm going to pass this. You can see that from Ward Street, there is quite a, uh, a an amount of trees that will be available to to keep this. Our, ours is a commercial zone, and theirs is a residential zone, and so it's important to respect that. Um, but I think that uh, I think you'll find that when this is all done, we have more than adequately addressed that as a buffer. So with that, I'm going to ask. Um, 
Kurt Newfield, if you will please uh, address the stormwater, um, and then I'll come back and we can go down through these issues to make sure that they're all addressed. Thank you, Sonny. Which puts in the numbers what I've been describing. 
the two-year event goes from seven, basically seven and a quarter to about five and a half CFS. And right on that, I hate to read things uh, too too much, but even in the 25-year event, that's reduced. Uh, when I read the comments from Word and Curve in the peer review, they also uh, seem to concur that it was a, a minor increase from the one uh, out at that point. So at the risk of repeating myself, I guess what I'm saying is, and I think Word and Curve agreed that there will be no net increase. And I'm certainly aware that the town and the planning staff here is very sensitive to anything that might cause uh, disturbances further downstream. So that's our rationale and our approach. If you have to answer questions, if you still have uh, remaining concerns. Do you have anything else? About this or, any, or anything else. I think we'll... We don't take a dive here. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll hold our questions until you're done okay. with your presentation. Thank you. So, I will say that um, we've, uh, we've looked hard at that detention pond and I think these, this analysis of the decrease overall on the <coughs> peak run of, um, of development flows, both pre and post, are pretty significant decreases overall. Um, I will report to you that we have submitted this application to the DEP. Um, they have accepted our application as complete and um, they are on track to give us an approval in time for our main housing um, application for financing. So um, if things go well here tonight, I think they're lined up to, to um, work with our schedule as well. So we, um, we had a great meeting with them. They've um, looked at our plans preliminarily and are uh, looking at them more in detail right now, but I, I feel pretty confident that um, we can answer any questions that they might have and any questions that you might have. So um, with that, I uh, think I'll just uh, refer to these comments. Um, the, uh, the staff also uh, commented on how frequently we would maintain our detention bond um, we have a contract with a company now um, to maintain it and we're going to be doing it. We're going to have them inspect it every six months and we will be prepared at the, uh, I believe if it's uh, acceptable to you, Jay, I think this maintenance agreement for stormwater management facilities will be executed when they're complete, correct? Uh, that actually gets executed typically before it starts. So when we take out the building permit, would that be the time that you would want us to execute that? Yes, and then yeah. at the end of the project, then we there's a uh, a, uh, a report that your uh, design engineer would do that says they've seen the uh, uh, system implemented and that it's functioning as uh, as planned. Sure. And this contract that I actually have with um, I don't know if you're familiar with Sterling Stormwater Maintenance Services. But they have uh, broken down the stormwater components on our site and they have uh, quarterly inspections on some of the focal point systems and the pond setting annually. So I'll pass that out to you and take a look at it. Matrix, if we go back to that, it's on our plan. Um, uh, I think you all have a copy of this in front of you too, but um, Jay just wanted us to be perfectly clear about the density and uh, or what we are providing here. Um, but it, and I think it, it will be clear in perpetuity for our setback requirements, our side guys setbacks, and the um, 15 units per acre that we've used for this particular development. Um, our parking, uh, we have 54 parking spaces for 40 units, so that's in excess of your requirement. Um, we feel that that's necessary for the type of visitors we have, and um, so we feel comfortable with that. I think that, um, so I think we've addressed everything there that staff asked us for. Do you have anything else? 
Uh, uh, just, I think I've answered the DEP questions, and I've answered the density questions. We've talked about stormwater, and we've talked about um, the thing I haven't touched on tonight. I think that we, that I've talked to Jay about, um, is our recreation fees, and uh, it's twenty thousand um, dollars. And Angela and I have talked about doing a an upgrade to the intersection at Sawyer Road and Route One. And it was her suggestion that we might use this impact fee for that because it's a that's the area that our residents typically cross to go to the park, um, and it does have the best sight lines. So I think that would be a great use for that money. Um, and I think that fulfills that requirement. So with that, I think that um, I, I, we're more than open to any questions. I think uh, we made a presentation last time on our our signage. Um, I, I find for housing I need minimal signage, but for you who aren't familiar with what we have, we have two of those signs, uh, one at our main entrance near the veterans home and one uh, at our service drive at the Best Commons One. So I'm happy to take any other questions and I know that Kurt Bluefield uh, will be available for any as well as Rick Shannon. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'll just quickly point out that it's always we're fortunate to have our time engineer here. We know attention to weigh in on stormwater or anything else. We're on the spot at some point. Um, but we'll start in there with you this time. Great. Right? Yeah, that's good. Well, the questions are coming. You did a really good job. So um, you answered a lot of questions that I had before we started. I think I still have some good questions about stormwater, but I know Rob. And we're going to touch base on those. Can you just, for my own education, I may have missed something on the lease. I understand the, the presentation that was done on it. Is the lease on the, the land, the buildings, is a 100 year lease for the town, or what's the. Uh, it's on both. It's on the uh, original Bessie School. It's on all of the improvements, and um, there's a buyout arrangement either for us to buy it at the end of the lease or for the town to pay for any improvements that we've made on the property. Okay. So, hopefully. Is there a term associated with it? Duration? Uh, 100 Probably. years. 100 years. Yeah, 100 years. Yeah. Less than 12. Okay. So, I kind of figured that. That's interesting. Uh, I like the part that the gentleman did on the uh, finance. It made it a little bit more. Um, I understood it a little bit better when we got down. Good. That's helpful because there's nothing easy about our business. Um, so, I saw the traffic study, that looked good. Um, or the uh, air review of the traffic studies, and that was good. Um, and like I said, I think you did a good job of answering most of my questions. Um, is the plan that we're seeing tonight, it's, if we're going um, to ask to vote on it, there's no um, changes to the parking lot and everything is as it is we're still looking at the parking lot. All right. Yeah. Um, thank you. We do, have a, and, um, we do have a subdivision plan that we submitted in, in a, as a mile today as well. But, um, that's, but that's a very, you know, it's a very simple subdivision plan that then amends our original subdivision plan and shows this building. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Just a quick reminder to Board members, please make sure you're speaking up because the acoustics in here are tough, and some of us down at the center of the table are straining at times. So, thanks, Rachel. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity I had to do the site walk. It cleared up a lot of questions that I had, <clears throat> and I noticed on C2A I finally found the access to the parking lot. It, it's in the I think point two font. But it's, it's there, so I, I appreciate that. I was having difficulty finding it before. And I have no questions. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for coming in and walking the site and looking at what we have. Thank you. Robin? Um, yeah, I was just wondering maybe Mr. Newfeld can address whether or not the, the permit that's in front of DEP will address the general standards or just basic standards. 
Oh, uh, at the DEP level for this site, they're only looking at the basic standards. Uh, we did the pre and post calculations for the town. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So, you're, so we're looking at creating 0.91 acres of impervious surface for this new project. I got it from the stormwater management plan. Okay. Second I, page. I don't got it. There's a lot of numbers. Huh? Um, the, the total new previous area since when Bessie started is uh, exceeding the two acres. This so it's phase one project, plus phase two? Correct. This one, phase one plus phase two is more than an acre. This one is a big one. Okay, so you still don't have to meet the general standards? Correct. Even though you're going to disturb more than one acre? You say the standards. General and basic standards, not flooding standards. The flooding right. standards are pretty close. Yep. That's only for the town. This does meet the general and the basic standards. General and basic yes, standards. I'm sorry. It's absolutely Thank you. That's what I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so from there then, um, I don't see a detail for the detention basin where everything's going. Could you point me to where the detail for the detention basin is? Well, the phase one. That's what I thought. We can get that for you. Okay. I, I guess. Um, I, I really, I really compliment you on how you're sort of controlling the, the stormwater flows by throttling back the, the orifice through which it'll go, kind of a thing, Kurt. But I'm just. Sort of unintended consequences of a bad value of a 50 year storm or a 100 year storm. Am I off base? No, you're not at all. Um, okay. <clears throat> again, this, the pond was somewhat designed with future development in mind. Yep. Um, and so it was uh, intended to do that. What we're able to accomplish with the current design is to allow the building to go out and around a little bit okay. through the drip edge filters. So those. Uh, Both sides of the building have a drip edge filter which comes down and then yep. this one goes here and that one goes there. So the building, which is a large part of the new and previous area, this one, gets treated and released. And because there's an overall site wide reduction, there's still no net impact downstream. And so those are going to one of the focal points? Is that what you're saying? The, the focal points control it and then it gets out. Okay. Uh, Sounds good. And, and has anyone talked with you or in your DEP application, have you talked about deed, restriction, deed restrictions or covenants on the weapons that are... Um, it, um, we talked about that. Uh, legally, we have no rights in the property. We, uh, because it's the town's property. And the town owns it, we can control it. And I think in their best interest, they'd be wise to see what, what the future holds because they, you know, so, I guess I would I would want to take what we have discussed here today and ask ask Jay maybe if this is something that the town wants to consider because um, the the wetlands are sort of acting as a stormwater control and treatment. So there it is, this is a very sticky situation where the town owns it, but there's development going on it, and it's something to think about in perpetuity moving forward, and I don't know what to say more than that. Okay. Um, well, I guess I would like to hear the full direction of the board, and if that's the okay. board's desire, that would really be a question. Okay. I'd probably start with our town manager, yeah. um, since ultimately a council decision. Okay. And, and just, to, just to be clear, what, what specifically is the... The request would be to consider putting some covenants or protections on that wetland to, to ensure that it won't be um, developed because it's actually providing a lot of um, stormwater uh, control and treatment in this area, both for the phase one and phase two. And thinking that we have on the other side of that property boundary, Eastern Village, Eastern Village talked about having some challenges of its own. So the idea is to maintain any impacts on site and by doing that the town can can implement some controls by by not by making sure that that sponge 
stays there that will absorb some of this this runoff that's happening there. So I would, I would just say that you know we have such a long term piece and we can't do anything on that property without town approval. I, I can't imagine that you know we don't know what's going to happen in 100 years. So I, I you know yeah. I, I guess that's the only reason I put right. it out there. But I'm, I'm not sure if the town it would be the it's yeah. not my decision, obviously. So it's not my decision either. Yeah. Absolutely, I'm just putting it out there and sure. going on record and saying that. Yeah. I'm not quite sure either that the um, the Sterling quote addresses all of the um, inspection and maintenance requirements. So um, we the will when they come to. Uh, okay. So, so I would I would I would. It's hard to before it's all built to get it exactly yeah. perfect, but trust me. So um, it will be part of the agreement that I signed with the town. Absolutely. So I would have some some proposed language for our some, draft. Some um, conditions. Language there. Um, let me see. I lost my place. Uh, do you propose to have any lay down areas for construction? Uh, basically staging areas for materials and the like and where that have you thought about where that might be? It would be in the areas of the parking lot because okay. you know, Excellent. I, I think that it's a fairly restrictive site okay. because it's you know we have a active park pollution here okay. and then during the um, the pre construction meeting I, I would suggest that maybe we just think about if if there's an opportunity to sort of flag this uh, I love that you put that sort of setback line there. Is that what you're calling it? We have two lines. Yeah. We have a disturbance line. Yeah. yeah. A disturbance line. Yes. Yes. So yes. Maybe yes. that got flag or stage or something. It will. Prior to construction. Yes. yes. That's great. Um, I commend you for such a great resource for the town. Um, I have one last question. What would the recreational fee be? If you aren't paying the $20,000? It would be the same. Okay, super, thank you. I'm all set, so, thank you. It, uh, if I might just jump on that point, really it's a it's a matter of, you know, is the board interesting in seeing those funds directed to a specific improvement or more generally to the, to the recreation contribution fund, which is then utilized by our community services program. At, at this point, staff has really identified that trying to, that we've identified a specific use that's both part of a future town initiative as well as one at the first meeting we were sort of surprised when we heard the applicant talk about how their um, residents actually prefer to use that intersection as a way of accessing uh, Memorial Field behind the, uh, so that was sort of how we came to that estimate. If I could just add on, Jay. So then that would be near where the light is that goes across the Sawyer Street so that folks could walk down to the park Correct. on a nice night. Right. That's supposed to be a crosswalk. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. I will piggyback on to the topic since it's being brought up now, but that is the one thing that caught my eye in this. Um, I guess my question would be, is it typical for a planning board to earmark funds via ordinance? I mean, it, these funds are called for. In these ordinance, right? um, so, yes, I'd say the board often has in lieu in lieu projects, uh, whether they be naturalized trails, be sidewalks that are off site. Um, think of a, one that's actually going to be installed relatively soon, I believe anyway, uh, with Lane Farm, they're adding some sidewalks down a stretch of Green Acres Road to Route 1, which was the board sort of found, you know, uh, so yeah, I would say it's, it's within the board's I think wheelhouse. My, con my concern yeah. with earmarking funds is that I don't believe we have the full view of projects that are on the list to do and what has a higher priority or more urgency or the larger need for the money. And I think it's it's great that we're thinking about how this money can go to better utilize the general area. I just don't know if I know enough to say that this is the right use of twenty thousand dollars that's supposed to be going to a recreation fund. That's my major concern with it. So I 
personally am not in favor of you know, marking this money for that specific purpose. I don't have a problem with it going that way if the uh, powers that be that set those prioritizations and have that, but whether it's long-term planning, whoever has a finger on that, um, you know, I would, I would prefer to see some recommendations of what that money is typically going to, rather than taking it away from a project that maybe has been sitting idle for two years or and some funds were needed for it. I, I think that would be my, my stance on that board, portion of it. Um, outside of that, I'm pretty much okay with everything else I'm seeing here. So, um, I did have a question. I don't know if this is typical either. If the peak runoffs start to exceed the estimations to a point where it's becoming a detriment, what remedies do the town have to ask the applicant to go back and do something about it? Uh, I think I would turn to our town engineer on that question, but typically once the, once the modeling is done, and it's approved by the board, and then the applicant's engineer has gone out and done their review for our post-construction stormwater, you know, basically says, yep, it's built and functioning as plants. Um, I think, you know, if the modeling was wrong, that's just sort of the end of the game, and um, future fixes are a different discussion. Okay. But okay. Angela, please chime in if I've gone astray with that. You know, I, because I, I do know, you know, it is minor. I know the net calculations were lower. We could get all of that. If we were wrong, uh, we, we have 12 years of experience with that detention pond, and we've had no problems. I mean, all right. Not I, I get it. But things go wrong, and um, you know, I don't, I don't think I'm personally proposing anything be incorporated this evening on this plan, but perhaps somebody can put a footnote somewhere in their notes stating that we should look at that as a community approach. And maybe that's already going on, I'm just not aware of it. But that, that I would be in favor of. So, it's interesting, but thank you. Thank you. Roger? Well, first, uh, I'm sorry, I enjoyed the site walk. I thought that was useful. And, uh, beautiful place you have there. Thank you for taking your time, Roger. Uh, I, I don't really have much to say. The only thing you haven't mentioned, as far as I can see, is the hydrant. Is what? Is the hydrant. The hydrant, is, you're right. Thank you for reminding me, Roger. Um, the, uh, the fire department has asked for that hydrant. We're just waiting to locate it uh, as part of our uh, building permit so that we can record exactly where they want it. The other thing that I did not mention, if I could just Rest, just for Mr. Chairman, sure. is we did have a journey radius uh, analysis done, and I'll just show you that. So, so this is typically what they ask for a uh, 40 foot vehicle yeah, journey life. radius. Um, and so that's been. staff talking about slope curbing versus stand-up curbing and we um, have slope curbing in front of the building in case the fire truck needs to get closer to the building highly unlikely with the amount of um, paved area we have but we do have slope curbing there um, and everywhere else it's stand-up curbing to control the water to get to the focal points I have on the um, subdivision 
recycling staff comments, just to make sure. Um, do we do the auto return simulation? That was, that's what we were just referring to. Okay. Sorry. No, that's um, all right. And the pedestrian ways over to um, a Latin's Cure. Yes. So, so you you recall when we were on the site how you could see that you would go up to the S1 and take the ramp ramp and get to your one, take the sidewalk, or cross over the parking area, the lower parking lot, the best square and wall station. Retaining wall issue. Retaining wall. The retaining wall will be added just to protect that buffer, that 25 foot setback, so that we don't have to um, grade into the setback area and it will allow us to keep more trees. And staff, they, they asked the question, so I'm just making sure the staff is happy with this. Yes. Um, I don't really, um, the only thing I want to chime in on is the $20,000. I, I think that if you want, if the staff, if the board wants to make a condition that that be investigated, that's fine. I, I won't stand in the way of it. But I can't think of a better use of twenty thousand dollars myself than to use it for that particular intersection, because that intersection not only is going to make it easier for the residents of the Bessie School area, but all the people who live down on Enterprise, is it Enterprise Drive? Oh, yes. Yep where there are lots of condominiums with lots of older people, and this is this is where they now do cross to get to walk to the park. Many of them don't walk because it's, it's dangerous. They take their car. This is the kind of thing I think we need to be very aware of in this town, is how we can make it more pedestrian friendly. And this is an area right here that basically has got a built-in community of pedestrians. So I would be very much in favor of towards that. Other than that, I think it's very exciting and looking forward to seeing it. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Um, yeah, I think we're in pretty good shape overall here. Um, I appreciate the, the thorough walkthrough of everything and uh, appreciated the literal walkthrough that we had at the site a few weeks ago. Um, I think that was very helpful in terms of understanding, those things often are in terms of understanding. Um, dimensions and, and uh, distances and grading and those sorts of things and also just to get a little bit better feel of the of the existing community there so that was definitely helpful um, talked quite a bit about stormwater um, you know we do have a draft uh, additional approval here uh, to which we've uh, sort of as the discussion has gone on here sort of sketched in a, a condition that would uh, speak to the uh, execution of the stormwater uh, maintenance agreement, and uh, I'm going to introduce that here in a couple of minutes. I think with the, the conditions that we have drafted here we should be able to address the remaining loose ends that are out there. I don't see anything here that really I would consider, and I, I think it's the sense of the board that there aren't any remaining true threshold issues here in terms of considering approval. Um, I will speak um, briefly to the um, to the twenty thousand dollars. I definitely appreciate Mr. McGee's concern, um, and I would you know, respect anyone who might share that opinion uh, and that argument. Um, as Mr. Chase pointed out, you know there is precedent for us to to designate the usage of such a fee, and I think in this particular case, as Ms. Douglas pointed out. Um, and Jay alluded to as well. I think we have a, a, a good confluence here of a, sort of an, an immediate use that happens to benefit the residents of the site, but also um, is consistent with a, with a, a broader uh, public good for the town um, in, in terms of pedestrian safety and, and that intersection there. Um, you know, it's not something that I would necessarily fall on my sword over, but I, I personally am prepared to, to include a reference to that particular improvement um, in the motion. And I don't know if there are others on the board who would, um, who would prove that would be a tipping point in the other direction, but um, I think it's perfectly appropriate and a, and a, good, a good outcome, um, given very 
various things that we were talking about. Um, maybe before I put a motion out there, and I don't want to belabor the topic too much, but maybe just informally, is for the board in general, do folks see that the that designation is problematic in terms of the recreation fee? I, I see it as a little problematic because we, we don't know if there's something out there that's been that folks have been waiting for and it only costs twenty thousand um, dollars. On the other hand, I think the development of the pedestrian infrastructure um, really adds a lot to the whole town, not just not just to the the Bessie Commons area. So it's not a something I'm going to object to. But I, I do sympathize with the Mr. McGee's point. Thank you. Uh, who, who makes the decision on how those funds get out? Um, well, if it's just submitted to our recreation contribution fee that goes into a fund that's controlled by our community services program, and I'm not quite sure how they allocate those funds from there. Um, as I've said, the board quite often with subdivisions will identify an improvement within the project or in the area. So yeah, I, I, I could go either way on this. I mean, for, for what it's worth, that has had discussion with Public Works about this location. It wasn't done certainly in a vacuum, but I appreciate it. I, if I could just, one more point is it, it is supposed to be controlled by the Recreation Department, not the Public Works Department, and I feel that those are two very separate items. And the fee that's in the ordinance goes to community recreation, not traffic or transportation infrastructure improvements. That's that would be my final argument. So, if I, if I may continue, could, could we just um, on a condition yeah, add to it that um, this board kind of recommends that we for this particular project. I guess I would suggest it's either the board just change the, the condition to accept $20,000 as a recreation contribution fee, period, and or accept as staff has proposed. I think that, I mean, it, of course, you can come up with other <laughs> concepts, but I think if you're going to accept it as a recreation contribution fee, then that's what you're accepting, and then Certainly, as staff, we've had discussions with with uh, 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 the other department heads. But I, just thinking out loud here, I, I am by no way going to hold up the vote on this item. The applicant watching the town fight over how to spend money is probably not what they were here for. So, that being said, um, I'm completely willing to just just do the 20000 but I would like to see some sort of effort on the back half of this. Maybe some sort of communication between the, the recreation department and the staff and public works. Maybe there's a shared agreement or something, but I definitely don't want to hold up the applicant's business here fighting over how we spend money.
would be for a very short duration. Please. Sure. I really don't want to belabor this too much. Sure. I, I, I do want to make sure it's sets the board. Um, I, I just think it's a misnomer that we have a 25 year storm, we don't, there's only a 4% chance. I'd like to bring to the attention to the board that we've had two, we had two 50 year storm events which are much larger than the 25 year storm event within six months of each other in 2015 and 2016. And this is where the precipitation record is going. And so I think that it, it's, it's a little bit irresponsible to, to not take precautions somehow. So and, what, and, I, I, just, I just want to make sure we translate things at this point into something that we can act on in a motion. That's where we're going. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> um, hopefully I can help. Um, I think where staff was going was um, I understand what you're saying is insignificant amounts by the model. The question we had, and it's in Woodard and Kern's memo as well, is looking at, is there other opportunities? And, and I'm not asking to redo that pond, to, to dig out a pond and move those berms back and things like that. That's not what we're asking for. I think you are close enough to still tweak some things. And I understand you're, you're drawing and, and looking at, you've looked at a lot of different things. One of the things Woodard and Kern mentioned that I them about is is looking at that riprap for bay. There's some opportunities to model some things you have or maybe tweak what you have and maybe that's the outlet control structure and maybe it's downstream of that outlet control structure. That's enough to get us back to a pre-development peak flow rate and so that we can say, as we said before, Eastern Village is downstream of that. They've looked at their analysis and how they do their stormwater piece, which the board has seen. And it's based on these, not the 2006 numbers, it's, it's based on where you've updated, and I understand you've reduced, but they're based on those numbers on today's site. So I would hate to go back to that old, original site where it was a school, you know what I'm saying? Because that does impact downstream. So um, I guess my suggestion is would be to keep um, the condition and that we can work together to try to get that Absolutely. little bit. I think we're so I'm close that it's that. not what our Yeah, and as I read it, the, the, the condition is not particularly right. onerous. It's really <coughs> we're talking about doing annual production. Right. It's not, it's not about annual inspection. It's really about getting those numbers back down to peak, pre numbers so that an argu argument can't be, be made downstream of you that you didn't hit where you should have and it's impacting others. And that's sure. what the board has talked about, that accumulative effect in a watershed. And so we want to be able to justify that with the numbers behind it. No, I'm absolutely not. I don't think I have all the answers. I just said that I was also not going to be saying that says if we're going to make better for some collaboration. Thanks. Thanks, Angela. No problem. And appreciate the work that's <coughs> going to continue to look at it. Um, thank you for highlighting those items. Uh, with that, I move to approve the project titled Bessie Commons 2 Senior Housing proposed by Bessie Commons Corp and Bessie Commons 2 LP as depicted on the plan set prepared by Sightlines PA dated November 27, 2017 with the following findings and conditions. Findings. The applicant is proposing to construct a three-story building containing 41 bedroom units for senior housing. The facility is an extension of the existing senior housing facility identified at Bessie Commons. The property is located within the Town and Village Center's Transition TBC2 district and is identified on the Town of Scarborough tax maps as Map U41, Lot 2. The Planning Board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the proposed design of the subdivision and site plans adequately addresses the subdivision, site plan review, and zoning ordinance requirements for site utilization and layout, access, internal vehicular movement, pedestrian ways, landscaping, stormwater management, architecture, signage, utilities, and storage. Conditions, number one, prior to the, condition, prior to the issuance of a building permit, plan set shall be revised to include a the location of the required private in-ground fire hydrant. The location shall be approved by the town's commercial code enforcer, enforcement officer slash fire inspector. B, addition of a wooden guardrail detail or other approved feature 
along the edge of the northern parking field to ensure that snow storage is not piled up on the proposed focal point stormwater feature. C. Revise the stormwater management inspection and maintenance plan per staff comments. D. Revise the stormwater management approach to reduce peak flows to be reviewed and approved by the planning department staff. Condition number two. Prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall submit A, approval by the Scarborough Sanitary District, and B, approval by the Maine DEP. Number three, in lieu of a recreation contribution fee, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall pay $20,000 toward the development of pedestrian infrastructure at the intersection of Route 1 and Sawyer Road. Four, Prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall receive town council approval to amend the lease agreement. Five, prior to the start of construction, a pre-construction meeting is required. The meeting shall include appropriate town staff, the developer, and their site contractor, and is to be coordinated through the planning department. And condition number six, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall execute the stormwater maintenance agreement. That is the motion. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? <coughs> That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. All right. As mentioned earlier, item number six was tabled. We're on to number seven. Do we have a staff report? Uh, yes, just like to know, actually, maybe Angela, um, do you want to touch on the Board Road meeting that's coming up? Uh, sure. I, I mentioned the last meeting, I think, um, but <coughs> Wednesday at 6.30 uh, at the Scarborough Library, we'll be holding a, a meeting to go over the Phase 1 portion of Board Road, our infrastructure improvement project, um, and that is Phase 1 basically includes from here down to Maple Avenue. So we're looking at our complete streets uh, as a complete streets project. We will include not only the roadway drainage, but also um, bike and pedal.
making one act that Okay, thank you. That's good to hear. Um, I've got a couple of comments. One, uh, as many of you, not all of you, have heard, um, there is, uh, it's now public that uh, a partnership led by our members, Bear Brothers, has uh, the Crossroads property, the Downs property, under contract, the intent of closing on the purchase of that property next month. Um, as a member of the Long Range Planning Committee, um, I, along with Susan, is also on that committee, and, and some others had the opportunity to meet with their team as part of our Long Range Planning Committee meeting last Friday morning. Rachel was there as well, um, and uh, thought that was interesting and a, and a good way to sort of kick things off. Uh, there's going to be a lot to that, obviously a very long-term uh, redevelopment strategy there, but there will be some shorter-term considerations, and my understanding, uh, based on the discussion Friday morning, is that the planning board will soon be hearing from them and seeing them in front of us uh, early this coming year uh, within the context of infrastructure planning and kind of looking at the big picture there, but it sounds like there may be some shorter-term uh, discrete pieces of that that may be proposed for development in the relatively short term. Um, and so I just want to put that on everyone's radar. Um, that will obviously be a far-reaching and high-profile um, uh, effort. And I think uh, it might make sense for us when we have, I think we're still planning to have a planning board workshop prior to our first regular meeting on January 8th, which is our first meeting of the new year. Uh, perhaps we could spend a few minutes talking about how how uh, that might look and, and how we might uh, best approach it. Whether uh, you know, it's been suggested uh, by someone that we might consider having a having sort of a workshop at some level uh, with the development team to sort of understand uh, their their goals and, and sort of mapping things out. And I know they're, they're planning to have a workshop with the town council, I believe, on January third. So um, anyway, that's something to track and look forward to for the coming year and beyond. And um, aside from that, I just want to wish everyone happy holidays. It's been another interesting year, and look forward to doing this for, I guess, one more year. Anyone else? Yeah, I want to uh, echo what, uh, what Corey said about um, the project that's going to be coming before us and the opportunity that's going to be coming before us. Uh, as the Rivera brothers pointed out, there's approximately 500 acres uh, in the center of, of Scarborough. Uh, during the comprehensive plan, there was a lot of discussion about the future of that property and how it could be developed and how it should be looked at as, in a sense, the crown jewel of Scarborough. We have that opportunity. Now that we know who's going to be the developer, uh, and both of the folks, both of the companies involved are local, which is great. We have people who are going to be doing the development, who understand Scarborough, who care about Scarborough because they're, they're long-term residents as well as having businesses here. Um, but this is a giant project. and. And from my way of thinking, it's not something that we can really do piecemeal from the get-go. But instead, we need the sort of meeting that Tori was talking about as a workshop to talk among ourselves as to how we want to approach this. We should, to my way of thinking, we should not be approaching it piecemeal, but we should take a look first at the larger picture of what that property can be and how we're going to approach working with the developers, maybe kind of the conversations from similar workshops. But we have, we're, we're in at the ground floor, and I'd hate to think in four years we find ourselves saying, gee, I wish we had four years ago when the project first started. So the idea of a workshop uh, at our next meeting, that's great, um, might take longer than just a short discussion, it might be a uh, more substantial discussion about how we as a committee are going to work, how we as a planning board are going to work as this project comes before us. And then a follow-up with um, the Risperra brothers on what their ideas are. They passed out 
a very intriguing sort of sketch proposal of what they were looking at. And I think uh, we owe it to the developers who are putting in their money uh, and the town, the residents of Scarborough.